Pretty cool. <laughs> and I just produced a cut there. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You're all famous now. Let's leave everything and go traveling. See what tomorrow brings. It's only a choice of So when we left you last time, we had made it here, to a windy dirt lot a few hundred yards from the ancient ruins of Moray. Luckily, the high winds hadn't lasted all night, and when we woke up, we were anxious to check out the ruins. So we packed up camp, then went for a walk. But not before admiring how photogenic the trucks were looking this morning. Well, I have no idea what these circles are for or about. It's really cool. Yep. I have to do some research to understand we're why. We're at Moray, M-O-R-A-Y. And yeah, this one over here that we're about to head to is very, very deep. It's the one you see photos of. Yeah. But this is the fourth one of these in this little area. So huge amount of work. doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense that it's just for fields. Because unlike what we saw yesterday, they're not big flat areas and then a sh sharp wall and a big yeah. flat area where you can tell you're maximizing, excuse me, maximizing uh, flat ground. Yeah. These seem more like some sort of an amphitheater or a ceremony, something or other, but having three or four in the same area seems weird. Yeah, that's, I don't understand. Unless everyone came here for a big party. <laughs> and I just produced a cup there. <laughs> nope. They're all famous now. <laughs> I'm gonna have my own YouTube show. <laughs> yeah, you guys saw me too, like walking into that door uh, or whatever. I was like, oh, oh wow. yeah. Okay, so these ruins are pretty unique and probably the least visited in this valley. They are giant alien like circles that have levels, like we saw in Pisek. The deepest circle is 98 feet deep. And although no one can be sure what the site was used for, it is widely believed that they were a sort of agricultural laboratory. Because of the design, depth, and orientation of the circles in relation to wind and sun, they create microclimates, with a temperature difference of as much as 27 degrees between top and bottom. Pretty crazy. Soil studies indicate that dirt from different regions in the empire were imported here, so each terrace could have a different soil. And last but not least, it is thought that the Incas understood and were creating hybrid plants, which makes sense because about 60% of the world's food crops originated in the Andes, including hundreds of varieties of maize and thousands of types of potatoes. Maybe they were all perfected here. It was back to the trucks. From Moray, we headed a bit in the wrong direction to check out the ruins of Chinchero. I saw this blue truck last night and this morning going up and down that road. The water truck? It was our exit road. Yeah, but I was like, what is he doing? He just goes up the hill, he turns around and goes back down the hill. Up the I thought he was like shuttling something, grain or something up the hill and it's just the water truck. He has a slight exhaust problem. It's not the exhaust problem. I think it's just a slight engine problem. Just a little. It's not the most 50, efficient. Fifty percent of his diesel is being blown into the air, and we're breathing it. But think about it, no mosquitoes here. <laughs> yeah, he's not helping that there the have fields because we're at like ten thousand, eleven thousand feet. But.
The city of Chinchero was bustling when we arrived. What sets this site apart from others we've seen in the Sacred Valley is that a Spanish church sits right on top of an Inca temple ruin. The church, built in 1607 by the Spanish, is hard to miss. And oddly, this isn't the first time we've seen where the Spanish had placed a church atop a ruin. Subtle. The city is thought to have been a country getaway for nobility. The area also boasts very good soil, though, so it is thought to have been a big agricultural producer as well. Therefore, an important city in the Incan Empire. The stonework, as always, is mind-blowing. You can see here where the original meets the rebuilt. Chinchero is also the mythical birthplace of the rainbow. Chinchero is the center for weaving in Peru. And we had happened to park in front of the textile center. So after popping my head in to have a look at all the woven goods, the ladies asked if we spoke Spanish so they could give us a demonstration of the traditional way of weaving. Bienvenidos al Centro Textil. Yo me llamo Maribel. Les voy a demostrar el lava, desde el lavado hasta el acabado de la manta, ¿sí? Ya. Esta planta se llama sarta. Es un detergente natural que crece debajo de la tierra. After the root was grated, it was stirred and strained, and then the dirty wool was washed for the first time. Inca champú. Voy a filtrar el último modelo de colador. Sí. La lana de oveja, recién trasquilada. La ovejita nunca se ha bañado. Once washed and rinsed, the wool came out looking nice and white. You can see the contrast to what it looked like before. Antes, después. El olor. <laughs> After the wool was cleaned, it was then spun on a drop spindle. They said that the sheep's wool is cleaned and then spun, but alpaca wool is more slippery, so it is spun and then cleaned. Next, they showed us all the natural dyes. Everything from leaves and roots to a cactus parasite is used to create all the vibrant colors. Mm. Lastly came the actual weaving. They use a traditional Quechua loom called a backstrap loom, which is apparently the oldest form of a loom in the world. It's made from wood, bone, and string, and it has an overwhelming amount of threads. All the patterns are done by memory, and it can take months to finish a large piece. If you find yourself in Chinchero, this place is worth a stop. Okay, next we are heading back in the right direction to check out our last stop before Machu Picchu, Ollantaytambo. But first, some lunch. Thank 
Back to the trucks. Like I said, we were headed for Oyente and Tambo. There are people everywhere at this one. This is it's cool and it's big, but way too many people here. Parking and driving, no fun in this little town. Now, we didn't spend too much time here because we knew we needed to make miles towards Machu Picchu. But Oyente and Tambo is speculated to be another noble estate, a ceremonial center and a gateway to the Amazon. It was the last stronghold for the Incas in their battle against the Spanish. There is a temple on a steep mountainside, lots more levels, a water temple that was preserved by a flood and discovered in 1980, and it was by far the most crowded ruin we had been to so far. So instead of fighting the crowds, I found a nice place to sit and watch the chaos. I even got a visit from a deer. Here's your mother. Take me, dear. Yeah, maybe it is. Just like Like I said, we didn't spend too much time here because we knew we needed to make some miles. Our tickets for Machu Picchu that we had purchased in Cusco a few days before were for the next afternoon, so we needed to make it to the hydroelectric plant the following morning before 7 a.m. That way we would have time to hike up before our entry time of 1 o'clock. So off we went up over a big pass towards Machu Picchu. It was a very curvy drive and took longer than we had anticipated, so we ended up driving into the night. We were all pretty exhausted from the day's adventures and weren't too excited about driving on this windy one-lane mountain road in the dark. So we called it a night here, about an hour from our end point. And that, my friends, is where I'm going to leave you. Because if we go all the way to Machu Picchu in this episode, it will be way too long. But join us in the next episode as we conquer the epic Machu Picchu. I hope you enjoyed wandering around the Sacred Valley with us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Wow. <laughs> it's just a laboratory, Didi. Didi, what are you doing in my laboratory? I think you have to turn the... I don't the really want to turn <laughs> I don't really. I don't really want to I don't think you can, because it's messing with the train track again. <laughs> Maybe they were all perfected here. La, la, la.